What is going on? Charles Bowenston here. We have a book review. We have a couple of book reviews that are going to be coming up, which is great for you guys because I know that you don't actually like reading the books that I potentially do. Or if you do, you say, actually, I don't want to read that book based on the book review you did, which means that the book review isn't that really that good. It's a long story short of saying these are the cliff notes to the book Speed of trust, which I actually purchased a while ago, probably years ago, maybe up to five years ago. And it was it's kind of one of those books that it just sits on your, your shelf and you say, I already know what trust means. I already know everything about it. And that's actually why I picked it up because I said, how do you write a 350 page book about trust? And it's not even scientific. There's scientific trust books that essentially they go over you know research and they have all of the this data behind well if you talk in a calm voice it's probably going to this is nothing to do with that i'm going to go over what i really liked i'm going to go over what you really should like about it i personally i don't think you should read it because a lot of people they'll read books like this and they'll say obviously obviously you have to you have to show your intent or you're kind of going into someone's bank account, their trust account, obviously, but they don't actually do it. And that's the problem, okay? We live in a world where, before I get into the book, is that trust is something that I essentially think that we either take for granted or we distrust. It's one of the two, there's no gray line. It's, it's either you take for granted that if you stay at a hotel that it's gonna be amazing, based on its level of reviews. So if you see a lot of reviews, you trust that this hotel, based on the level of good reviews that it has, is gonna be a good, so you have trust in the comments. You have trust in each one of those comments adding up that they were real people that stayed at the hotel and wrote their honest appraisal of what it was like. They didn't get paid by the hotel. They didn't have to, they weren't forced to leave the review. What I'm getting at, is that there is an easy way to build trust, okay? This book, this book talks about it, okay? So first of all, it's written by Stephen Covey, Stephen M. R. Covey, which is actually Stephen Covey's son. So essentially, there's levels of trust, okay? So the first one is obviously self-trust. And I'm just gonna go down the four cores of credibility, okay? Self-trust is the most important thing, personally. I don't think it's trust among other people because if you can't trust yourself, you're either not gonna be trustable, in other words, people trusting you, or you're not gonna be able to trust other people. And the reason being is that it's kinda like when you judge someone for, I don't know, the way they look, that means you're judging yourself for the way they look. I'm never gonna look at another guy and say, listen, his eyebrows are just misaligned because I don't do eyebrows, I don't care about my eyebrows. It's like a dentist that always looks at teeth or a hairstylist that always looks at hair. Someone that consistently either clothes or tailors clothing, they'll look at other people's clothes and be like, that's well tailored, that's a great suit, that's really sharp, whatever the case is. So the first wave, as Stephen Covey talks about, is self-trust. So within that, are you congruent, which is integrity. So integrity is essentially the easiest way to say this is that are you, are you congruent with what you're saying and how you're saying it and actually doing it? In other words, is everything congruent? You have that famous line, which is obviously, uh, you know, I, I'm, show me your bank account. And I'll, and I'll show you your, what you do, how much you save, I'll, your spending account, everything. Because you'll say, I wanna buy a home, but you're not saving any money. I wanna be debt free, but you're still buying the latest iPhone. Do you really wanna be debt free? Because that's not congruent. So that's credibility. You're losing credibility. So essentially the way that he talks about it is you debit your own bank account your own trust account, I'm sorry, your own trust account, or you're debiting someone else's. There's also credit. The thing is, is that credit, crediting your bank account is never as good, is, it will never equal a debit. So if I miss your birthday, I have to do a lot of things to get that credibility back. 
In other words, I debited. I said I was going to go to your birthday and then I missed it. I have to do a lot of things to ensure that the credibility, that the trust between each other, which is the second one, relationship trust, is aligned. In other words, I don't go to your bank account, but I write you a note and I show that I apologize and I buy you flowers and I give you a gift card is not as good. Okay. It's not, it's not equivalent. So you debiting from yourself, which is I'm going to wake up at 5 a.m. And then you don't wake up at 5 a.m. You're debiting more than if you woke up at 5 a.m. yesterday, because you said you would again, wake up at 5 a.m. And then you didn't. So your debit is worse than a credit. Intent. What's your agenda? You know, wh why are you doing what you're doing? You know, what, what's the alternative motive, which a lot of people unfortunately feel like there, there is behind most, rela most relationships with themselves is, am I doing this for the right reason? Am I doing this for the right reason? Number three is capabilities. Are you relevant? Okay. This is, this is powerful in the, in the case because when you think about capabilities, you really think of competence, okay? Competence comes in a multitude. It's obviously delivering the results. It's obviously ensuring that they are a standard that you've said and set and delivered on time, on budget, and obviously to the expectations to yourself. Number four, results, which is essentially your capabilities, but what are your results? And you're, you're always, always going to need to deliver results. Okay. Consistent results. And as I wrote down, what's your track record? What's your track record on results? So the second wave he talks about is relationship trust. So essentially that could be relationship with your family, with your friends, with your spouse, your colleagues, your boss, it's anyone outside of you. And I'll just bring this monumental thing up is that I think that trust comes in only two ways. And it really only comes down to one thing, which is, do you do what you say you're going to do? So if you say, I'm going to go to the gym, you will lose trust, which is essentially confidence. If you don't go to the gym, that's trust with yourself, then you have trust with other people. You didn't go to my birthday party. You said you'd go to my birthday party. So that's trust and confidence in the relationship with someone else. So really it's loyalty. It's saying it's doing what you say you're going to do. That's really what it comes down to. So there's 13 behaviors. I'm not going to go through all of them, but essentially within each relationship that you have, there's a different dynamic. Obviously, if you have a brother or sister, you know, relationship that's totally different than mom, dad. You know, if you have a coach, that's a totally different relationship. But there's 13 principles that you really want to explore. Number one is talk straight. You just go right at what you need to say. Unfortunately, in this world, it's a little bit different. We've kind of lost that where you beat around the bush or you're, you're worried about it. So it's what we really need to change is not the discussion. It is the reaction to the discussion. Because if you change the discussion, you're essentially saying that I am not able to handle what you're going to say. I'm not able to handle the feedback of what you're going to say. So that's number one. Number two is demonst demonstrate respect. This, this I already do. Even if I don't know the person or like the person, I just respect them that if it's not working out, the relationship or anything, I walk away. I respect that person. I respect myself and I just walk away. So demonstrate respect, create transparency. This is one of the biggest things that I'm going to be bringing into my business is that in 2021, I really, which is in, you know, a year and a couple of months, I really want to operate my business as a complete transparent public company. I'm going to release financial data, f release our expenses, how many calls we're making, all our client, not our client information, but like our closings and all of the information it holds us accountable and it also demonstrates, as they say here on behavior number three, it creates a transparency, which is trust. I cannot stress transparency enough. Transparency is everything. If you actually are transparent about 
how you're putting in an offer in real estate or what's actually happening with their home that's on the market. You have to be transparent. Bad news is still news that needs to get to the owner or to the buyer or to the seller or to the clients or to your colleagues, to your friends, your families. You have to create a an avenue and a, a trust factor through transparency. Right wrongs. So in other words, if there's a wrongdoing, you have to write it immediately. Show loyalty. Loyalty, I'm very loyal. I am loyal to my videographer. I'm loyal to my clients, my, my family. I'm a very loyal guy, okay? And I would hope you are too. A lot of clients, they switch real estate agents really quickly, which I understand, but was it was it in a in a necessary way that is actually going to produce the result that you want because if you hire someone and they don't as number six is deliver results which creates trust then that person's not going to be as hungry number seven get better so i already talked about this in a previous video is if you are not improving you're essentially relying on old data data old data for new problems. So if you have a new problem, you're relying on old data to solve your new problem. Here's an example. I brought it up during the podcast, which is essentially saying, I only snowboard or ski, I'm a skier. I only ski once a year, but I wanna get better. So I go every single January. So I go this January. I'm relying on last year's data on how to go down the slopes. I haven't gone since last January. I have not improved since last January. So my ability to deal with ice, other people going faster, moguls, steepness, if I'm going through the glades and there's trees, that's all old data because that's last year. There was no improvement. But if I worked on moguls for a couple of days, then next time I worked on glades or I leveled up to a double black diamond or a black diamond, I'm essentially improving. I'm also improving my form, my technique, the muscle firings. That is getting 1% better. And that is a better concept than getting 1% better. Confront reality. This is the basis to alcoholism. Uh, I'm sorry, AA, which is you have to say, I'm an alcoholic. Step number one, admit I'm an alcoholic. It is causing problems in my family, my relationships, my health, my money, my job, my finances. All throughout my life, I'm an alcoholic. You have to confront reality. A lot of people do not confront reality. David Goggins talks about this. David Goggins talks about, he's like, I have no idea why people do not admit you're fat. You're fat. You're not big boned. It's not the food companies, it's you. Confront reality, okay? Reality is good because then you say, okay, I know where I am, I know where I'm starting, and I know I, where I need to go. This could be with debt. This could be with starting a company in a bad market. You, you messed up. Confront reality. Number nine, clarify expectations. Clarifying expectations is essentially bringing on a new client or relationship and say, say you're dating someone and you say, hey, listen, every single day I wake up and it's at 5 a.m. or 4.30 and I go triathlon training every single day. So that means the night before I'm in bed by 8.30, 8.45, 9 o'clock the latest. Okay, you're laying, out the, you're, you're laying out the expectations of that relationship up front. If you work with clients, and they call you at 7 p.m., 9 p.m. Listen, uh, I know you called me last night, but I end work at 6 p.m. and I'm a hustler between nine and six or eight and six. You can call and let's talk then. Number 10, practice accountability, which obviously you know, that's the biggest thing for me. The only way I actually have any results is practicing accountability. Behavior 11, listen first, keep commitments. Keeping commitments is everything. So that's essentially, you keep the commitment of what you're going to say to yourself and to others. That's what I was getting at before, extending trust. And then they go into the third, fourth, and fifth ways, which is the organizational trust, the market trust, and the societal trust. I highly recommend that it's a very basic book. It is a long read, 350 pages. 
But I can tell you, when I walked away, there are things that when it's said by someone else who's also intelligent, who's also done the amount of work that Stephen Covey, obviously his son, has done, you walk away and you say, if this person who's very successful thought out of the 350 pages that he wrote, and this got by the editor, the publisher, and through him, and he probably wrote 600 pages or 500 pages, and these are the top 350 pages, I take him seriously. Yes, there's things that I'm like, oh, obviously, integrity, keeping commitments, and then he'll tell a story, and you're like, you can only keep commitments to yourself or to others, and then when you do that, you either lose trust in that relationship if someone else is not keeping their commitments, or you lose trust, aka confidence, in yourself if you're not keeping commitments to yourself. And then you go, oh, my bad. My bad. I'm not keeping commitments to myself. And that's a big deal. Keeping commitments to yourself, I think, is the number one thing in life. If you keep commitments to yourself, you will be extremely successful. Because you're saying, I know I'm hungover, or I know I'm tired, or I know I don't want to go to the gym, but I'm still going to go to the gym. I know it's a really bad market. I know it's raining out. I know it's right before Thanksgiving. I don't feel like making sales calls. And you still make sales calls. Do you know what I'm talking about? Because I do. That was me yesterday with the gym and today with the actual sales calls. I didn't want to make sales calls, but I made a commitment that I'm going to make sales calls. So guess what? When tomorrow rolls around and I, I may feel the same way or on Friday, obviously, yes, it's easy when you feel amazing, when you feel motivated, when you, when you know you can just crush all the sales that you can. But it's on the days that you say, I got this from someone else. It's the days that you don't want to do it is the days that you need to do it. So if you want to pick up the book, I have a link below. You can check it out. Obviously, a couple of pennies come back into the uh, into my bank account. If you guys buy it, it's up to you. Jeff Bezos is doing just fine at Amazon. I don't think, you know, he'll, he'll mind if uh, 45 cents goes into my bank account to continuously put this out. And listen, the reason I say it like that is because my I know I'm going to make a ton of money. You know, if if you want me to be 100% honest, I know I'm going to make a ton of money, okay? It's not going to be about money. Anyone that's wealthy has talked about once they became wealthy, they're like, oh, this is it. Yeah, there's some people that are assholes and, you know, kind of flaunt it and, you know, everything else. But most of the people that earn their own money, you know, Dan Bolzerian did not earn his own money, okay? You know who earned their own money is Elon Musk, is Jeff Bezos. Those guys give out tons of money. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, they give out a lot of money. So the people that earned it, they give it out. And I feel, am I going to be on billionaire status? I don't think so. You know, because that takes a level of commitment, talk about trust, that I'm just not probably going to go towards. But if I think about it, my future is for the next 10 years, I'm going to be on a doing track. Then for the next 10 years after that, I'm going to be on the strategizing track. And then the, in 20 years, I'm going to be on the growth track. So I'm going to probably be around 65 and people are going to say, holy cow, where did this guy come from? Where did he come from? Um, yeah, I decided that when I was 34. I didn't decide that at 65. Okay. If you keep the level of commitment, I'm sorry, if you keep your commitment level to yourself at 95% because there's going to be days that we slip. Not saying no one is perfect, but if you keep the commitment lighter, you're going to do what you say you're going to do to yourself and with other people. You're going to have a lot of trust with other relationships, which is a lot of confidence and a lot. It's going to feel good. And then if you keep the commitments to yourself, it's going to feel even better because you're keeping commitments to yourself because guess who knows and, and if you don't keep a commitment to yourself, you're the only one. So it's not a big deal. It's not that big of a deal. Nobody gets hurt. You do. Even worse. So if you guys want to pick up the book, awesome. Subscribe to the video. Have an amazing day. 